Good morning. My next opponent is Cities of Sigmar. So let's see what that's gonna look like. So just briefly going over my list. So this is the list I've played for this entire league. This is game five. I'm playing Big Wah, Gur, Grand Strategy Wah, Triumph Indomitable, which do I get this time? Do I get it? No, we're tied. So I don't get the Triumph at 1990. Bummer. I love getting the Triumph. Uh, in, so, Weird Nub Shaman's the general with Master of Magic and Hand of Gork. We have Gobsprek, of course, Orc Mega Boss with Destroyer, War Chanter with Fix and Beat, Swamp Call of Shaman with Blizzard, Wergog Prophet with Glowing Tattoos and Hoarfrost, 2 times 10 Ard Boys with Stickas, a unit of Brutes, a, a reinforced unit of Bull Boys, and a unit of Gork Runtas. Core Battalions were running Andorian Acolytes, a Warlord Battalion, and that's, of course, for Destroyer slash and tattoos a wizard finder with the mega boss and the brutes that's actually kind of a cool thing because the wizard finder gives you plus one attacks and that's something we don't unlock in this army you know we're getting plus one to hit we're getting plus one to wound we're getting bonuses to rend we're getting bonuses to damage so against any wizard that's any size like anything that's big this is actually significant this came up in my last game against sold like grave lord i forgot to use it but he had two wizards that had like 12 or more wounds and i destroyed like a mighty destroyer, sorry, I had a destroyer turn and I forgot to throw that one extra attack. And that one extra attack on that turn would have would have been a big deal. And then Iron Jaws Fist just gives me plus one to hit before the plus one to hit unlocks. So this is like a, you know, Gore Gruntus turn one kind of thing, right? Like I don't have to use all that attack. I just, I just get to use all that attack kind of for free. That's cool. So let's look at my opponent's list. So Cities of Sigmar playing the sub-faction Mist Haven. Um, grand strategy, banners held high. I don't really care about that, really. It's like, uh, this is not very interactable, maybe by turn four. Basically what it is, is you, at the end of the game, you check to see who has more standard bears slash totems. And if you have more, you win. And if you don't, you lose your grand strat. But to me, this seems like a win more type of grand strat. If you're already winning, then you'll probably get your grand strat. But if you're kind of losing and you're being tabled by your opponent, you're not going to get your grand strat. It's one of the reasons why Wa is so good as a grand strategy. If we can hold on and get all of our battle tactics, like the Wa actual grand strat is really easy to get if your general is still alive by the end of the game. You just need anything. You need one one brute, one Ard boy, one, right? It's easy. And then we have the Alchemite Warforger. So... The Alchemite Warforger. Actually, sorry, I wanted to first, before we do that, I wanted just to quickly go over some of the basic Cities of Sigmar rules so that when we're looking at the list, you know, we can kind of make a little bit more sense of it. So there's only really two Cities of Sigmar rules. One is Orders. So Orders, you get to pick... Um, yeah, you can give orders to friendly heroes, orders represented by order tokens. Each order token has two sides, one that shows the logo and the other one that has the order on it. At the start of the battle round, after the priority roll has been made, you can give one order to each City of Sigmar hero on the battlefield. To do so, pick one of the orders below and place a corresponding order token with the Cities of Sigmar icon face up beside the hero that you give the order to. No more than three friendly heroes can have the same order at one time. Okay, so I think every hero gets an order, but you can only use the same one up to three times. Um, yeah, and then there's restrictions on race, right? The Dwarden, the Elf, and the humans, right? Orders remain secret until they are revealed. Each order will state when it can be revealed and how it is resolved. A friendly unit cannot accept, uh, cannot be affected by the same order more than once in the same phase. At the end of the battle round, all, are, all orders are removed. Yeah, so pretty straightforward. There's only there's two that I'm a little bit concerned with. One is called advanced information. So what this means is, so when the Fusiliers move, they lose this fortified condition, um, but advanced formation lets them not. And if they lose that condition, their range gets cut in half. So this basically is going to let the Fusiliers move and still have their maximum range. And then return fire. If you shoot the Fusiliers, the Fusiliers shoot back. So I'm going to play as if my opponent always has this ready to go. So I just don't get to shoot at the Fusiliers. Okay. And then you pick a city, right? And then the city has a rule. So my opponent has Mist Haven. At the end of your hero phase, you can um, you can pick three different friendly Mist Haven units uh, that are more than 12 from all enemy units. And they can move D6. And if they're mounted, they can move 2D6. So it just means the Fusiliers can move an additional D6. So let's look at the actual list again. 
Um, so Alchemite Warforgers, the general with the command trait Master Ballistics and the artifact of power Magnificent Macroscope, hereby known as Macroscope, and the spell Transmute to Lead. So the Master of Ballistics, what this, artif what this uh, command trait actually does is it, when you issue all-out attack, you also get plus one to wound. So, seems good. The Macroscope gives plus three range to the Fusiliers. And the spell Transmute to Lead is a Horde Buster. You roll a number of dice equal to the number of models in the unit, and then for every roll that's greater than their save characteristic. So against Ard Boys, this, is, this spell is going to deal five. And I, I don't believe that the spell is even very long. I'm trying to see. Transmute to Lead. Yeah, range of 12. So I, I this probably won't really come up very often. We have Pontifex. Oh yeah, and the Alchemite Warforger only has five wounds and is a one-cast wizard. So Gobsprack is within head pop and range for Gobsprack. So that's what uh, that's kind of what, what what the plan is. But the thing that really is concerning about the Warforger, the thing that I'm actually concerned about, is the War Scroll spell Blazing Weapon. Casting value of 7, a range of 12, if successfully cast, until the start of your next hero phase, friendly humans, friendly city of Sigmar human units, uh, while, while they are within, while they are wholly within 12 inches of this unit, have 6s to hit, cause 1 mortal, in addition. So it means that if this thing's standing next to the Fusiliers, and the Fusiliers throw 60 dice, then that's a lot of mortal wounds. It also makes the Fusiliers Unleash Hell quite scary, right? Because if you're charging in, it's 10 mortal wounds. That's two Gorgruntus right before even the, the attacks happen. So this thing is, this is the number one thing I need to stop is this Blazing Weapon spell from the Alchemite Warforger. Thank goodness we have Gobsprack. Hopefully my opponent lets me go first. If my opponent lets me go first, fine by me. Pontifex Zenestra. This thing is a little bit scarier. It has a four up ward on nine wounds on a five up save. It's not a, it's a priest, um, but he gets to unbind a spell. So this is going to be three unbinds in the list. And uh, he has a prayer called Vessel of Sigmar. And if he's within his territory, he gets to pick one effect from a list. If he's outside of his territory, which is not going to be very difficult on this map because the territories are cut into quarters then you uh, get to pick two of the things. One of the things is you pick a unit, give it a five up ward. Another one is add two to the move characteristic of humans. So that could be the Fusiliers. And the third one is for each enemy wizard and priest on the battlefield on a two up, it takes D3 mortals. I am assuming my opponent's gonna pick this one a lot just to try to kill off all my, my handful of, of, of casters. And uh, so, I mean, heroic recovery and fix and beat, I think is how, how I counter that, but it's like it's still a little bit scary. Like I, I'm, I'm kind of concerned about this, a little bit. I don't, I don't want my stuff to die, like my general to die in the back. There's no range on this. It's just every, all of them anywhere on the battlefield. So, okay. Uh, Battle Mage is a one cast wizard. Uh, its little ability, uh, Realmstone Orb, extend, extends the range of spells by three, by six inches, and then this twin tailed comet spell. What it does is you pick an enemy unit that's within range, and so the range on the spell is 18, but we're going to extend that to 24 because of Realmstone Orb. You draw a straight line between the Battle Mage and the enemy, and you deal D3 mortal wounds to the enemy unit, but for every unit that the line that you drew between the Battle Mage and the enemy unit crosses through for any friendly unit, i.e. the Fusiliers, their bravery becomes 10. So he's going to use this on his Fusiliers to make their Bravery 10 so that they don't die to Battleshock in the Battleshock phase. Fair enough. Right, save you at that command point, you know. You're going to have to kill a lot of them before the Bravery check kind of matters. So, yeah, you know, fair enough. Getting further down, we have our Battle Line section now. So the, the Free Guild Steel Helms, these guys are whatever. They're just screens. Like, they have some some stuff, but it's they're, they're just screens. They're, and there's two units of 10 of them. And then we have the Fusiliers. The Fusiliers are going to be scary. Uh, they have an ability called the Resupply Run. So at once per battle at the start of your shooting phase in the third, fourth, or fifth battle round, you get to re-roll hit rolls. 
So if they have that Blazing Weapon ability, any non-six gets to be re-rolled. So if you're rolling 60 dice, uh, 10 of them are going to be sixes, and then you're going to re-roll 50 dice, and like eight of them are going to be sixes. So being able to throw out 18, you know, 15 to 20 mortal wounds uh, on battle round three, like whatever this thing is pointed at is going to die, right? Uh, probably every, anything it's pointed at is going to die, but this resupply run is going to make sure that whatever this thing is pointed at is going to die. Um, and besides that, like they don't really have much else going on, right? They just, they throw a lot of dice. They throw a lot of dice. Up next, we got a monster, War Hydra. 12 wounds, 4 up save, 8 inch move. Uh, it has a 9 inch breath weapon. That's a little bit scary for my uh, my art boys and my brutes because uh, it's equal to the number of models in the target unit to a maximum of, 12, of 10. And it's so it, it can actually deal like a fair amount of damage, right? Twos to hit, threes to wound, one rend, one damage. So, you know, throwing 10 dice at me is a lot of dice. Not a big fan. Uh, it heals up to five wounds at the end of the combat phase. So if I'm going to fight this thing, I have to fight it and kill it. You know, I can't let it live on one thing, but this is a good brute target. But I deal so much damage. It's like if, if I decide this thing wants to die, I can deal damage in the hero phase, the shoot phase, the combat phase. So if I want this, when I decide this thing is going to die, it'll die. Fulminators are always scary. You just got to make sure that they that you charge them, that they don't charge you. So if they're setting up for a charge, you know, you can always teleport and charge them in. Um, they die to unleash hell and they die to the counter slap. So if they charge in and kill a unit of Ard a full unit of Ard boys, you're going to take out the unit of fulminators. So like there's nothing in my list that these things really want to get to gobsprack. They'd want to get a gobsprack. So I just got to make sure that I charge them and they don't charge me. And then we have some kind of crazy units here. This free guild command corpse. This thing is actually kind of freaky. It has a couple different abilities that I'm concerned about. So one is, so it's got six models, three wounds each, four up save, and it's kind of like Gobblepalooza. There's all these different, right? The model, uh, it has one Arc Knight, one Whisper Blade, one Great Herald, one War Surgeon, one Soul Shepherd, and one Mask Gargolian. Mascot Gargolian. So, you know, it's got like, and then all of those different things have a different ability. And then it's like, you can use this ability if you have like the, that, the model that it corresponds to. So there's two that I'm concerned about. One is Sawbone. What this what it is is um, at the end of your hero phase, you get to return D3 Fusiliers. Is what it's going to work out to be. You can also return D3 Steel Helms, but who cares? It's going to be D3 Fusiliers. So I can't pick away at the Fusiliers. I can't pick away at them. If I'm going to kill them, I got I to gotta get in there and I got to kill them. Which is going to be hard, but we'll talk about that later. And then the other one is called Dispatch Spy. So uh, once per turn, so this is every turn, so 10 times a game, when an enemy unit issues a command, you can say that the Whisper, Whisper Blade will attempt to disrupt it. If you do so on a 4-up, the command is not received. It still counts as having been used. Oh, okay. And the command point is lost. So... This is scary for Mighty Destroyers. I teleport pigs at 12. I want to move them in to... A, I want to... Well, no, sorry. I teleport pigs at 9 inches with plus 1 to charge. I want to charge them in with Mighty Destroyers to get around Unleash Hell for the Fusiliers. And then on a 4-up, this guy's like, nope, doesn't happen. Right? It doesn't happen. Your Fusiliers do not get to charge in. But I wonder how this works with a Mega Boss. Because if, if the, the command is not received... So then the mega boss can issue this a command again without spending a command point. So can he just mighty destroyers the same unit of Gorg Wrenches again? Because the Gorg Wrenches didn't receive a command. They just were like the command was issued. The mega boss can issue it two times. Right? So I think that that works. So the mega boss and the pigs going in together can work. Okay, cool. Uh, and then the Dark Riders have a very similar ability. The Dark Riders are fast. They have two wounds on a 4-up save, but they have 14-inch movement. There's five of them, so it's 10 wounds per unit. Um, they can they can retreat and still charge and shoot. And then they have this other ability called Sow Terror and Confusion. Roll a die each time an enemy issues a command within 12 of any friendly unit with this ability. On a 5-up, that command is not received. 
So it's another way of shutting off Mighty Destroyers. So I have to keep that in mind. This guy is going to try to shut off Mighty Destroyers to get around Unleash Hell. So, gotta, gotta think about that. Gotta, gotta zone those guys out. And then he's a two drop. So I'm going to get to go first. Right, because because he's because he's a two drop. So that's the list. So let's look at kind of what the list actually does. So it's a shooting list. There's 30 Fusiliers. They have a 24 inch range, like a shooting range plus five inches of move. The um, I always forget this these units names. Uh, the Pontifex Zenestra's prayer can give them plus two move. The Alchemite Warforger. Artifact of Power, Macroscope, gives plus three range. The Mist Haven subfaction means they can move D6 in the in the hero phase. So all of those things combined, the Fusiliers have a range somewhere between 33 and 40 inches if the if that's what my opponent wants to do, um, which is a lot of range. So when I'm measuring out, because my opponent has to deploy first, when I'm measuring out ranges, it's going to be 40 inches is what I'm measuring out from the, from the Fusiliers. Very scary. Yeah. So then, and then there's a bunch of other buffs. So the, again, we talked about Blazing Weapon from the Alchemite Warforger. Six, sixes on, sixes to hit cause mortal wounds in addition. So that's scary. Uh, plus one to wound to all out attack. That's scary. And then the, all the ranges and they can have a five up ward and they can like move and still keep their range and return D3 models. Like he's all in with this block of Fusiliers. So then it's like, well, what do you do about that? right like shooting beats castles i am a castle he's a shooting what am i gonna do about it well let's keep looking so what else does this list do the hydra is kind of fighty can fight over screens k we talked about the dark riders and the fusiliers corpse turning off commands uh, specifically mighty destroyers we talked about fulminators charge them this list has no teleports and it only has two casts with three unbinds and a prayer. So Gobsprack is going to hopefully pop some heads. Gobsprack is going to hopefully pop some heads. Oh, like it just makes my head hurt. Uh, so what am I worried about? My disadvantages. Well, shooting beats castles. The two up D3 mortal wounds from Pontifex Zenestra every turn might be a problem for all my casters. Fix and beat and the on the weird knob is going to help. I'm going to be taking the wah, um, like, here we go, here we go, command trait for the first couple turns, but after that, it'll probably be heroic recovery. There's multiple ways to deny mighty destroyers, which makes things difficult, makes things more difficult than, than they have to be. My advantage is Gobsprat can kill the casters. My tactics are going to be easier to get. I, because big wah tactics are just easy to do. I deal more damage than my opponent overall. And besides the Fusiliers, nothing else scares me. Right? So, the map is Fountain of Frost. Fountains of Frost. Fountains of Frost has... Your territory is 25%, like your, your quarter. And my territory is my quarter. And then along the line, there's three objectives. And... Um, the scoring is Control 1, Control 2, Control More. Like that's, and then Battle Tactics, so basic scoring. There's a couple of twists. The Andorian Locusts count for 10 models for the purpose of contesting objectives. My opponent has two of them. I have three of them. Um, and then if there's three or more units contesting an objectives, they on a four up, they deal D3 mortal wounds to each unit that's contesting that objective. So it's like, it's fine. D3 mortal wounds is whatever. Um, but one map specific thing with these twists is that you can teleport an Andorian Locus onto their objectives and take them from them if they're not holding them with 10 or more. And you can also do things like I could teleport a Wurgog onto their, into their territory, onto their objectives, and then not only take the objective, but hopefully blow it up. And then D3 Mortals is going to be warded off with a four up ward. So I could deal a little bit of damage there. I could force, depending on terrain positioning. I could force my opponent to have to deal with me on his side instead of coming and deal with me on my side. So, um, I don't have to fight in the middle of the map because I can just, I can just hold one, hold two and get my tactic and then do the same thing for my opponent. My opponent has to hold one, hold two, and hopefully their tactics are harder to get than mine. So my plan, 
I'm gonna mork it up. I'm gonna be cunning. I'm gonna hide. I can score tactics and hold three objectives while I'm hiding. This is all gonna be about terrain. I gotta hide from those fusiliers. I need to force them to move up while I sit in the back and build up wall points. Think about it this way. And thanks to Aaron Newbaum for all this insight. He had, I had a good conversation with him and he, uh, he pointed out a couple things and like, I was kind of thinking the same thing already, but he sort of concretized my thinking in this regard. But every turn that those fusiliers don't shoot is huge. It's their prime. It's my opponent's primary damage output are those fusiliers. So if the fusiliers are doing nothing, his army is doing nothing. So I'm going to try to get two rounds of shooting for my opponent that are wasted. That's what I want. I want I want the first two rounds him to not be able to shoot at me because I'm hiding from him. Okay? That's the plan. While that's happening, I'm building wall points. And I'm just going to sit there. If my opponent provides me with an opportunity where I can go in, then I will. But I'm going to force him to move up the battlefield. And when he does, I can teleport things into his backline to take his objectives while still hiding. Okay. Or maybe I can get into this block of fusiliers. If I deny the blazing weapon spell with Gobsprack, the Unleash Hell does not scare me anymore. The Unleash Hell means I'm losing a pig instead of three pigs. That's the difference. So if I can, if I can deny that, if I can deny blazing weapons and he leaves some space open, the Gruntus can get in and take out half the block of Fusiliers. If I do that, I win the game. If I remove half the block or more of Fusiliers, the game is mine. Right? Because it just changes the math. If I can remove 15 Fusiliers, then I can shoot at them with Bolt Boys because he gets to shoot back. But if I have already removed 15... Well, I'm going to re remove seven or eight more. Go ahead, shoot back. Especially if I deny Blazing Weapon. I need to deny Blazing Weapon. Like, I have to. If I don't deny Blazing Weapon, it's going to be bad. Like, putting Gobsprack in a position where he can get hit by Fusiliers to deny Blazing Weapon. Like, maybe not turn one, but turn two. Turn three, for sure, is worth it. Like, trading Gobsprack for that ability, to deny that ability. Especially with 10, uh, 10 or more, right? Like, if I can trade Gobsprack for his two casters, fine. Deal. Right? Good trade. He can he can blow Gobsprack off the table if I can get rid of his two wizards. Done. No problem. Um, Yeah. So, from there, if everything goes well, I should be able to march my army up the table and take the game. Turn three. Right? I'm hoping by turn three, I can get a bunch of wall points. And I have hidden... And repositioned and hid from those fusiliers and teleported things around the table. And hopefully on turn three, you know, I've built up enough wall points. I've denied enough spells. I've picked away with Gobsprack. I've, you know, thrown some stuff into their back line. I've been annoying and a problem. And then I can just suddenly on turn three explode out and take the game. He'll shoot at me and I'll lose some stuff. That's fine. But I'm going to trade more favorably after that. So that's the plan. So for deployment, my opponent gets to choose who goes first, so I have a strong feeling that I will be going first. Therefore, I want to deploy everything as far back as I can and be sure that my casters are outside of unbinding range. Uh, then Gob can move forward to unbind spells. So my deployment's going to be really far back. So my likely tactics in this likely order are Magical Dominance turn 1. Everything is going to be out of unbind range. So I can get all my spells no problem. Up next is Surround and Destroy. Because I'm hiding, I'm probably going to be left and right and back battlefield edges. I'm going to probably be deploying in both corners. You know? Like, because if the Fusiliers have to pick a way to go, I want them to have to choose. Like, I don't want them to be able to... Like, I don't, I don't even know. But Surround and Destroy is one that I can do while hiding on my side of the table. Sneak Up, another very easy one to accomplish while I'm hiding behind rocks. I'm looking for Wait For It Lads on turn 4. And... and or turn five, we'll see. And then Intimidate the Invaders is going to be another very easy one to get because the battlefield territories are only a quarter of the map. So I just have to get out of that quarter. So that should actually be pretty easy on the when I decide to actually get out and fight. I could also do Lead into the Maelstrom or Dats our turf now, depend like later in the game. But I mean, if you look at my tactics, like I'm going to be able to get my my 
magical dominance to run and destroy and sneak up without having to come out of my hidey hole. I don't know if my opponent's going to be able to accomplish the battle tactics for three turns if, if I'm not fighting. If I'm hiding, I don't know how my opponent is good. Like, I don't know exactly because I haven't looked at their, their battle tactics in great detail. But I have this feeling that they're going to be harder to accomplish than mine if I'm just going to hide. Right? And then once I get those three, then for the last two, there's, there's four that are pretty easy for me to get. So I will deploy to score the first three without having to move. And then wherever his few slayers go, I'm just gonna like reshuffle behind terrain, right? Like I'm just, it's like, oh, he's moving that, oh, quick everybody this way behind this rock, right? So if I go first, I will buff and move a little and hide as best as I can. I want to get doubled. If I go first, I want him to have to, to double turn me right away. Cause I, like I said, I if he, if he can't shoot the first two turns, so if I'm positioned and ready for the double and he can't get me, it's like, okay, you didn't get me, right? Like that there was your first two turns shooting. And if I go second, I will likely have to do the same thing, but I'll swap Magical Dominance for Surround and Destroy. Um, and I'll stay hidden. I'll, if I double turn right away, I'll stay hiding. Like, my double turn will be hide, and then, like, no shooting, no combat, nothing, right? And the next round, right? Like, same deal. I'm, like, I'm, just, I'm just hiding. I'm just gonna stay hidden. Yeah. He's got no teleports. Right? His Dark Riders are fast, but his Fulminators are fast. Nothing else is fast. So, if I see the Fulminators, I'll shoot at them with Bolt Boys. It's like, okay. You know? Like, if I kill your Fulminators and you kill my Bolt, and you kill my bolt Boys as a clapback, okay. That's the only other thing in your list that deals any damage. So, I think that's probably the end of the slides. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to think about and talk about was specifically how I can get around to Unleash Hell. Because if I can prevent Unleash Hell, then I'm... If I can get into the Fusiliers without them Unleash Helling, with either a buffed up Mega Boss or a buffed up Unit of Pigs, I win. I'm going to win that game. I'm going to deal enough damage. If I can get rid of the Fusiliers, I just kind of win. It's going to be game over. Right? If I hide for two turns and then get Fusiliers in round three or in round two, I win. So I have a lot of movement shenanigans that I can do. So one way that I can get around Unleash Hell is I can take the Gore Gruntas, assuming I have space to do this, teleport them outside of 12. Nope. Teleport them outside of 8 of the screen of the Fusiliers. Sort of off to the side. I mean, like, I kind of wish I could pull up TTS. I guess I can pull up TTS. Should we just pull up TTS and look at, like, and look at, like, deployment and whatever? That sounds reasonable. Uh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we go like this. Yep. And then we go like this, nope. What do we go like, like this? God, I love that lo-fi. So here's, oh shoot, oh, it's the wrong one. TTS is, is good, but I'll tell you, it's a little, it's, it is janky. It is, it is kind of janky. And it, it is what it is. I'm glad that it exists and I'm glad that, that we have it. So here's whatever. So I guess I can't remember what the, uh, fountains of frost and then fountains of frost. So here's what the battlefield looks like, right? So you can see like hold one, can hold two, hold more is going to be relatively easy to hold. If the deployment, if this was the battlefield like this, right, I would be putting a lot of stuff back here and back here, right? Like I'd be hiding behind terrain. Like I would be putting stuff right in the back. If this was deployment, I mean, maybe I'll do a whole video on, on deployment, but I don't think, I think, but you sort of get the idea, right? It's like, I'm going to hide back here. And I'm going to hide back here and I'm going to, I guess I'll have to tow in on every objective. So I'll probably have to like run Gore Gruntas up to here and just hold this objective or teleport something up to here so I can hold this one. And then these ones are going to be relatively easy to, to touch, right? So, I mean, that's that terrain. And then let's try another piece of terrain. 
So same deal. This one's even better. I'm gonna hide in right behind like this little this little area in here, right? I can st like you can imagine lines of sight. So depending on where my opponent puts their fusiliers, probably someplace central, right? So it's like okay, I, I'm gonna hide all behind here, and there's nothing my opponent can do to to get me with those fusiliers. Anything that comes around the corners is gonna get shot at, death stared, charged at, traded with, right? Fulminators are coming around. Okay, well I'll throw something at the fulminators to make sure that you know. That they're not charging in i can also put some stuff back over here right and maybe like you know i can touch this objective while still staying out of line of sight of the fusiliers right no problem here's another example more terrain this one's actually pretty good too right i can hide in here and i can move some heroes and stuff into these little spaces hopefully this would be fantastic. Like, look at all this hiding space. I could cram a lot of stuff in here. I can't have three units contesting this, right? So that would be a little bit of a problem, but maybe I can get a unit in here without contesting this objective. We'll see. And then I can also hide a bunch of stuff back here, right? Like, it'll be pretty easy for me to control all three of my objectives, and it'll be difficult for my opponent to get in and try to take them from me, right? Like, and then I just, and then I just wait, and I hope the fuselage come up the middle and leave the back line exposed, and then I'm getting in, right? So same thing here, right? It's like I can I can sit here and hold this piece of train. I can sit here and hold this piece of train or this objective. There's woods in the back, so I could probably even hide in here and hold that terrain, no problem. And then I'm just going to sit there and wait. And hopefully he's going to either fail to score battle tactics or come at me too aggressively and lose stuff. And I'm hoping to get 3d6 plus 9 wall points, right? So that's 19 wall points on average. And then here we go, here we go. So... By my third turn, I should be ready to wad it up, right? I should have everything that I need, and I should be ready to go. So that's kind of the idea. Another way that I can get into the fusiliers is if I issue, uh, so I can. So the mega boss can't. Yeah, the mega boss can. The mega boss. The way that these command denying abilities from Cities of Sigmar are worded is that it doesn't count as being received. If I look again, I'm going to read this again at the Fusilier Corpse, at this Dispatch Spies. Uh, the command is not received, which means that unit did not receive a command. So the Mega Boss can issue Mighty Destroyers to himself twice. If the first one is denied, he can issue it twice. I'm going to check with my TO on this. But it means that the Mega Boss teleporting in is going to be nine inches away. I'm going to have plus one to charge from my wall points. And then Mighty Destroyer. Oh, deny. Okay. Well, on a four up, right? But then I, I can do it again. So maybe I'll, if, if I'm really smart, if I'm really smart, and if my opponent pushes too far up the board, I should be able to hopefully, like, um, before I teleport the Mega Boss, Mighty Destroyer the pigs move up nine inches if that puts me within on within striking range right like if that puts me within a charge a reasonable charge after a nine inch move right then i teleport the mega boss nine inches away and mighty destroyer him or the pigs and then if he denies it i can still do it again with one of them and then if that happens if I'm remembering my rules correctly, if I'm remembering my rules correctly, and I'm going to double check right now, but if I'm remembering my rules correctly, you can't unleash hell if you're within, if you're in combat. So it means once I get something into, uh, you could, so unleash hell, you can use this command ability after an enemy unit finishes a charge move, the unit that receives and this has to be in the charge phase, right? So that's why Unleash Shell doesn't work with Mighty Destroyers because it's in the hero phase. The unit that receives the command must be within six inches of that enemy unit and more than three inches from all other enemy units. So if I can get, if I if I can attack it with a Mega Boss and the pigs from, from the same sort of angle, right? Then I can issue that command again in the hero phase. So I get two cracks at it, right? Because they both can Mighty Dis no, cause No, because I've already... Move the mighty destroyers with the, but you sort of see what I'm saying here, right? That if I, I I can get two cracks at it, even if they deny one of the mighty destroyer charges, if I if I'm positioned really properly, then I can get another chance to roll at it, 
And once I have successfully done it, the other units can also charge in in the charge phase without unleash hell going off. And then from there, it's like pigs fight first, mega boss fight second because he fights on death. And then that'll delete the unit of fusiliers. But I got to be really clever to make this happen. And my opponent needs to leave gaps open for me. But I'm hoping that he's going to start to feel pressure. Like I have to get him because I'm not doing anything. I'm not scoring tactics. I'm not shooting. I'm not doing anything. And so I need to go get him. I'm hoping my opponent's going to feel some pressure and that that pressure will leave gaps and leave area areas for mistakes. Another thing that I can do with the Gore Gruntas, I can teleport the Gore Gruntas and put them outside of eight. And then I can Mighty Destroyer charge them, but staying outside of six inches of the Fusiliers. And then in my movement phase, I retreat and move the Gore Gruntas towards the Fusiliers. And then I can still pile in three inches because I charged previously in the turn. And the Gore Gruntas have a two inch range because I'm using their Hakas. So that's a way that I can also get around Unleash Hell is by doing like S tier or movement tactics. But I'll have to, it'll have to be in a position where I can come at the like the screen's going to have to be outside of Unleash Hell range, or at least the screen is going to have to be in, like there's going to have to be such a spot where not a lot of the Fusiliers get to Unleash Hell. Because if you remember with Unleash Hell, um, when you do that thing, um, yeah, so it says in Unleash Hell, uh, models in this unit that receive the command that are within six inches of the target unit can shoot. So you don't. So with Unleash Hell, like if you if you end like 5.9 inches within like out like if you end 5.9 inches within Fusilier range, they can Unleash Hell, but then only like hopefully one model can actually shoot, right? Because if, if you sort of think about it, like if you're really approaching the corner of the Fusilier at 5.9, only one model is going to be able to shoot. Because the rest of the models are not within six inches. So if his screen is positioned in, su in such a way where I can come at the block of Fusiliers from an angle and charge at the line, even if he's within Unleash Hell range, if I have denied Blessed Weapon, then there's going to be not enough damage, right? Because we're talking about fives and fours at this point, right? You can't Unleash Hell, or sorry, you can't All Out Attack with Unleash Hell. So if it's like six models that have, you know... Uh, fives and fours with 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 one rend or is it one rend or is it zero rend? I think it's probably one one rend. Like it's not going to be enough to kill pigs, and then I can retreat, pile them into the fusiliers without the fusiliers being able to do anything about it. So if this is a violent furied um, unit, like that'll work really well. It works well well with the pigs because I can retreat nine inches. You know, like mega bosses and other units can do this as well, but they only get to retreat four inches and then pile in three inches. So. But, you know, Destroyer is going to is gonna ruin their day, right? Like, a Destroyer, just a straight-up Destroyer Mega Boss. The Fusiliers, what do they have? Fusiliers have a 4-up save. So, let's say with all at defense, they have a 3-up save. So, with Destroyer and Violent Fury, it's uh, half the block, right? And if I, have, if, if I have all my wall points stacked up, and I use Violent Fury... And I get the, viol the three Violent Fury. Like, if I'm plus one to hit, plus one to wound, which I probably will be by the point in this game, and I pop Destroyer, and I have Violent Fury, and I hit a heavy Horfrost, I'm going to delete the entire unit of Fusiliers in one go. That Mega Boss on foot, when everything is... Uh, when all the stars align, has incredible damage output. Expected 33 against uh, a four-up save. So in this case, it would be a three-up save. But I would still be blowing up that whole unit. And even if they have a Bravery of 10, it's like you're spending... The like, at that point, it's done. Like, you can, you can now kill everything else that... Like, you can kill everything that I use to kill the Fusiliers. And it's like, that's okay. So, I mean, that's going to be it. I'm going to have to really think every turn, especially after turn... Every turn, I'm going to have to think to myself, is this something that I can actually... Like, is the position on the battlefield such that I can actually kill his uh, units or his Fusiliers, right? And it's going to be like, so when I'm deploying, I'm really going to have to think about uh, what is being deployed where and how, um, like what kind of buffs I need for everything to work out properly, right? Because, like, let's see, are these Ard Boys in the back? Yeah, these are Ard Boys in the back. So I'm going to have, like, you know, my blocks of Ard Boys. That's all good and fine. Uh, and then it's more about, like... It's more about like a weird knob, 
a war chanter, a mega boss, and then like whatever I got my I got my bolt boys and my where's my swamp call a shaman and pot grot. Yeah, I mean one, two, three, four. Where's Gobby? Is that even Gobby? There's Gobby. Um yeah, this looks like my list. One, two, three, four, five. I'm missing a hero. I have six heroes. Who am I missing? One, two, three, four, five. Who am I missing for heroes? Oh, uh, Wargog. Wargog. So the Wargog has Horfrost. I don't... Th I'm not going to be Horfrosting the Brutes. I'm not going to be Horfrosting Gobsprack. I'm not going to be Horfrosting Ard Boys, but I will be Horfrosting Pigs, and I will be Horfrosting um, these guys. So it looks like the War Chanter is going to have to go over here, and I'm going to have to put... So these not so these units are definitely going to have to hang out together. Right? Because here's my teleports and my and my damage buffs. So these units definitely are going to have to hang out together. And wherever they are hiding, these these guys got to hide together. Right? Cuz it's it's Horfrost, Violent Fury, Teleport. And I'm definitely doing these guys for teleports. The brutes don't need to be teleported. They're wherever the Hydra is. They're going to position close on that sort of side. Uh, these guys have to be together, but they don't have to be with anyone else. They just have to hide. Gobsprat can can do his own thing. He just has to be within thirty to unbind my opponents. And then these Ard boys and brutes, they're just gonna they're just gonna hide, right? But these guys are the important ones. These guys all have to be together. So if I was looking at this table, it's like okay, they're all going back here, guys. Right? Like, they're they're all going here because that's where they need to be. Right? Of course, they fall through the table. Right? Oh, yeah. They're all just going to stack up here or whatever. Right? Like, the Gorgruntas. And they're all just going to be, like, piled up in this corner here or whatever. Right? And then, okay, okay well, Ard Boys are going to go, like, back here somewhere. Right? Like, they're going to hide over here. And, the, and then these Ard Boys are going to hide someplace, like, over here or whatever. Okay, fine. You know, like... Maybe you'll get to shoot at him a little bit, but hopefully not all that much, you know, and then everything else is going to be positioned in such a position. Like, I, I just don't care. They're all just going to be hiding, right? They're all just going to be hiding. So, yeah, uh, that's that. So let me know what you think. Is there anything that I missed? Wish me luck. Good luck. Have fun. Like, subscribe, and wah.